Welcome, welcome to worship at All Saints in Big Sky. We are glad you are here with us today and glad for those who join us online as well. We gather today, which is the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. We gather uh, in the name of Jesus Christ who welcomes us to this table of the Eucharist each and every Sunday. All are welcome to come forward and share in that meal of forgiveness and grace. And if you are able, we would love for you to join us after worship for a time of coffee and fellowship in our lower level. It is a great time to get to know one another better. And we have another opportunity today at 12 noon. Laura Sifeng is 
somewhere, right here, right in front of me. And she is leading, a, it's called a citizen CPR course, right? It's, a, it's kind of a refresher course, but for those of you that haven't taken a CPR course, you're also welcome to come, learn how to use an AED and practice CPR skills. So what a great opportunity to learn how to save a life. That's going to happen at 12 noon downstairs. Uh, so all are welcome to join Laura for that. Um, we are also uh, so glad for, for fathers today. Um, we wish you a happy Father's Day and give thanks for the fathers and grandfathers and godfathers and people that have been like fathers to us in our lives. And we lift up those folks and give thanks for the ways that they have helped to shape and form us. And then a couple of announcements. Um, we are excited. I'm going to point her out. I want everybody to look in the back at Deacon Heidi. That's you, Heidi. You want to raise your hand just so. Yay. Heidi was ordained as a deacon in the Episcopal Church um, in 2020. And she has served as a variety of ways as a deacon. And um, we are now blessed that she is entering into a relationship with all saints and is going to serve as our deacon. Now, she is coming all the way from Three Forks to do this. So she's going to be with us about once a month. But we are going to be glad for every time that she can be with us. Uh, serving as a deacon in worship, and then also um, finding ways to connect our community with the world outside these chapel doors. So we are, we are so glad you are here with us. And then we have a very exciting opportunity for any and all of you this week. Many of you helped contribute money for Domi's bench that is going to be installed in the new community park that is being worked on as we speak. And this Wednesday, the 19th at 5 o'clock, we are going to dedicate Domi's bench with a short little program at 5 o'clock and then some refreshments afterwards. Uh, Domi would love for you to be there. I would love for you to be there. And we just want to celebrate the fact that not only does Domi touch the lives of many children in this congregation and the life of so many of us in this congregation, she touches the lives of so many children and families all around Big Sky. And so um, this bench is in honor of her and of all of her Big Sky kids. So um, we are, let's actually, we're going to applaud Domi for all that. So, but... But if you are able, come at 5 on Wednesday to the community park. Let's take a moment of quiet now and prepare ourselves for worship. Please rise and face the font. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? 
Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite any children to come forward. these are? Do you know what these are? Do you want to take one? Can I hold it? Can, can Esme take one? Do you know what they are? But let's not put it. These are tiny, tiny seeds. And do you know what would happen if we put these seeds into the ground? They would grow huge trees. They would grow into a plant, and you know what? We could even eat part of that plant. And this is the amazing thing. In this tiny seed, this tiny seed already knows how to make a plant. In that seed is so much possibility. And when I think about the love of God, I think about the love of God as a seed that gets planted in us, and it grows. And Abby Grace, 
you know what's going to happen with your brother next week? Do you know what's going to happen? My mommy did it. <laughs> your mommy told you? Lawson's going to be baptized, and we are going to, we're going to believe, and we're going to watch how the Spirit plants a seed in Lawson, and that grows and grows into so much love that he's going to share with you, and he's going to share with everybody else. So if you guys want to go, do you want to take, you want to take these seeds downstairs? Do you want to go? You want to take one of those? You're so tiny. Well, it's so good to have you up here. <laughs> you want to go down to? You want to go to Miss Domi? You want to go to Miss Domi? Yes. A reading from Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender shoot from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will transplant it on the holy and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will transplant it, and it will produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All of the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. Word of God, word of life. Please read along with me with Psalm 92. It's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night, on the psaltery and on the lyre, and to the melody of the harp. For you have made me glad by your acts, O Lord, and I shout for joy because of the works of your hand. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of the Lord. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be green and succulent, that they may show how upright the Lord is, my rock, in whom there is no justice. A reading from 2 Corinthians. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home, or a way, we make it our aim to be pleasing to the Lord. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive due recompense for actions done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade people but we ourselves are well known to the Lord, to, the, to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us, 
so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance, but not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he who died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for the one who for their sakes died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we no longer know him in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Look, new things have come into being. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep, and would rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with a sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown up on the ground, is the smallest of all seeds on the earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Why does Jesus speak to us in parables? Perhaps because the kingdom of God is not like a math problem that can be solved with the correct formula. Perhaps because the kingdom of God is, is not something that follows the rules of geography. We can't just calculate the correct latitude, longitude, altitude, and find ourselves there. Perhaps because we 
cannot regard God's mysterious kingdom from a human point of view. And parables help us to walk by faith, not by sight. Why does Jesus speak to us in parables? Perhaps because parables are a little like a secret. When someone is willing to tell you a secret, you lean in a little closer. You want to hear. Perhaps because parables are kind of like a game, a game we are invited to enter in and play, not just once, but again and again. Perhaps because parables are like a joke. They twist, they turn in an unforeseen direction, and sometimes they make us laugh. Today's parable of the mustard seed should make us laugh, at least a little bit. As long as we're not afraid to laugh in church. Because a mustard bush is no cedar tree. A cedar is a great tree, like Ezekiel talks about in our first reading a great tree with huge, strong branches for all the winged creatures of every kind to build their nests. But in Jesus' parable, the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed that grows up to become a mustard shrub, a bush. Not a great tree. And yet somehow it puts forth these branches, branches enough for the birds of the air to come and build their homes in it. We should laugh a little. The image is a little absurd. Yet again and again, Jesus tells us that God works in kind of absurd ways. Not the ways that we would imagine God to work in. And certainly through people that we would not imagine God to work through. Just sweep through the scriptures and remember all those unexpected people God chooses for God's work. The devious trickster Jacob back in Genesis. The murderer, who also has a stutter, Moses. The enemy prostitute, Rahab. The poverty-stricken immigrant, Ruth. An unmarried Jewish girl named Mary. Illiterate fishermen. Greedy tax collectors. And a wandering rabbi condemned to death by crucifixion by an occupying government. God acts for the life and the salvation of the world in mysterious ways through, through the last people and the last things that we might expect kind of like a scrubby mustard bush. But when I think about this parable, I think, ah, all saints, this little congregation is kind of like a mustard bush. We're not a cedar tree. Let's be clear about that. We don't have this long, distinguished history, decades, centuries going back. We don't own a regal cathedral with those stained glass windows that reach up 50 feet into the air. In fact, we don't own a building at all. We are renters. And we don't have hundreds of members. We don't have paid soloists for a choir. Instead, we have a lot of folks that 
come and go and come and go. We don't have tons of children. We don't have tons of youth. We are always seeming to have to say farewell and Godspeed to yet another person, like we did last week to our primary musician, Bonnie. We are more like a mustard bush than we are like a cedar tree. But still, we manage our little assembly coming together with whoever happens to show up. We manage to be the guests at Jesus' table every week. We manage to welcome whoever walks through the door and sing our praise to God and lift up prayers for all those we know and love who are in need of healing. And we share greetings and hugs with the members of this community in the face of all of our joys and sorrows just of this last week. Here, in this congregation, we, we try to make space for whoever, whoever might want to build their nests, however long those nests will last. I mean, you think about a nest, none of them last forever. Some of them may hold up for decades, some just for a few years, and some maybe just for a few Sunday mornings. Still, that is somehow enough. Enough for Jesus to plant a seed of love and mercy and forgiveness and hope in each person enough for that seed to grow. That's the parable of the mustard seed, the mustard bush. But one parable is never enough. It's never enough to tell the whole mystery. And if if we only focused on the mustard seed parable this morning, we might start thinking a little bit too much about ourselves about our little mustard seed of faith that grows. We might start, I don't know, congratulating ourselves a little too much for all that we do, our outreach, our fellowship, our ministries, our work that we accomplish even though we are just a mustard shrub. And so perhaps to check that, Jesus gives us another parable to ponder this morning. It was the first one. Someone scatters seed on the ground. And then they go to sleep, and they rise day and night. The seed sprouts and grows somehow. The person who sowed the seed doesn't know how. The earth produces of itself, it seems, automatically. The sower in this parable has no control over the growth of the seed. Instead, the sower just sleeps and rises, sleeps and rises, trusting that the seed that was planted will grow when it's good and ready. The sower must wait and trust. And if we find our way into this parable this morning, this parable is telling us some of the most important part of our life of faith. The waiting and trusting part. Because it is a whole lot easier to do something and then to check all those things off our list when they are done. It is much easier to fill our days with activity 
activities that feel useful, helpful, valuable. It is much harder when our primary task is waiting. Waiting and trusting. Yet so often, that is precisely what we are called to do. Wait until a child grows up a little bit more. Wait until our bodies are healed from whatever problem. Wait until someone we love has died and their suffering is finally over. There is so much waiting for us to do. And all the while, somehow trusting that a God of mercy and love is alive and at work while we wait. As far as God's kingdom is concerned, we have to wait and trust a lot. Because God's kingdom is not growing at the rate of interest rates. God's kingdom seems to sometimes stagnate. I think just about this week. This week in June marks in a few days' time June 19th. Juneteenth. The day back in 1865 when federal troops finally freed 250,000 slaves in Galveston, Texas, two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation. This was 160 years ago, and yet we know, we know how alive and well discrimination and racism still is in our nation. We know that brown and black bodies are more at risk than any other body, at risk for hurt, at risk for violence in our country today. And June also marks a month of pride celebrations for the LGBTQ community around our country and around the world, commemorating that, that June 28th, 1968 Stonewall Uprising in New York City. And that was over 50 years ago. But still, young people are turned out of their homes, told to change who they are, and are much more likely to die by suicide because of their sexual or gender identity. If some of the basic tenets of being a Christian are love your neighbor as yourself and recognizing the image of God in the face of every neighbor, it seems like the kingdom of God has a lot of growing still to do. It is struggling to bloom and to grow. And certainly there are things that we can do as people of faith. There are things we do do we advocate. We befriend folks who need a friend. We send money to organizations that are doing work for peace and justice. We connect with a wider church. We try to stand publicly against racism, against homophobia. We care for refugees. We work for affordable housing. We bring food to those who need food. We offer compassion to those who need compassion. There is lots that we do. But sometimes the most powerful witness that we can offer is to visibly Wait and trust. Trust that God is at work. Wait and trust that the seeds 
of Jesus mercy and love love for everybody love for the earth itself these seeds have not somehow been lost but they are mysteriously secretly under the ground starting to grow and we will see them bloom someday and we have a name we have a name for how we wait and trust as people of faith, as the family of Christ gathered together. We call that waiting and trusting prayer. We wait by praying. We pray and so we come to trust again. And so every time we, we gather together as a community, we pray. We we come shoulder to shoulder together with our siblings and faith and we do this mysterious thing that we call prayer. And so we wait and trust that God's kingdom will come and God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. the whole people of God, let us confess the faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, 
Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those preparing for holy baptism, especially Lawson Altman, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops, Michael and Elizabeth, Marty and Lori, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Big Sky and Gallatin County, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Rich, Carmel, Steve, Linda, Carol, Dan, Pam, Irv, Jose, Josephine, Jaden, Bill, Jeannie, Pete, Mark, Julie, Melissa, Candace, Pam, Jerry, Sarah, Daniela, Isabella, Jane, Bob, Sue, Gail, Barbara, Jane, and Jerry, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, and for the unemployed and the destitute, for the prisoners and captives, and for all those who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And thanksgiving for all the saints who have gone before us, and especially those known to us, whose deaths we still grieve, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the fathers, those with us and not, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, Holy One, we command all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Peace be with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God triune, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Over the eons, your merciful might evolved our home of this fragile tree of life. Here by your wisdom are both life and death, growth and decay, the nest and the hunt, sunshine and storm. Sustained by these wonders, we creatures of dust join in the ancient song. The earth is full of your glory. The earth is full of your glory. Oh God, triune, you took on our flesh in Jesus, our healer. In Christ, you bring life from death. We remember his cross. We laud his resurrection. Broken like bread, he enlivens our body. Outpoured like wine, he fills the earth with goodness. Receiving this mystery, we mortals sing our song. The earth is full of your glory. The earth is full of your glory. We praise you for the heart of Jesus so filled with love for this earth. On the night before he died, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me Gathered around this table, your children unite in song. The earth is full of your glory. The earth is full of your glory. O oh God, triune, you create the worlds, you uphold the living, you embrace the dead. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Strengthen us for our journey with this meal the body and blood of Christ. Give us a future that trusts in you and cares for your earth. Empowered by your promises, we rise from our deaths to praise you again. The earth is full of your glory. The earth is full of your glory. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated.
as the light of light descendeth from the realms of endless day, let the powers of heaven vanish as the darkness clears away. At his feet the six green seraph cherubim with sleepless eye veil their faces to the presence as with ceaseless voice they cry Kralaluhuya Alleluia Alleluia Lord Most High Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and to serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, who feeds us, and who journeys with us be on you now and always. Amen.
Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.